Hey, this is Joe Glines from Automator, and this is another quick extract from the Hero Call. In this video, we talked about Auto Runs, which is the tool from Microsoft. I'll put the link up here where it's extracted from a package. Uh, Sys Internals, I think, is the, the name of the overall uh, download. But Auto Runs is a really, really great way to try to optimize your computer and disable a lot of the stuff that's starting every time. A lot of computers that you buy come with a lot of junk. Um, I do want to caution you, which we do in the video also, is be very careful. Don't delete stuff. Just uncheck them and make sure you go for like a month or so to make sure that your system works the way you want it to before you, if you do delete them. Or just leave them there. It's fine. It won't, it won't slow you down. But um, enjoy the video. Like it if you learned something. Also consider joining our hero group. It's a great group. We uh, have three hours of calls a week. And you also get 25% off of our products and services. Have a great day. Cheers. We were helping with one of um, our client's computers to try to speed it up. And Isaiah mentioned auto runs is a great tool. And I thought that you guys got to be careful when you do this, right? But I thought it'd be great to have Isaiah walk us through how to use auto runs. And it's not that you eat fast food and have to go to the bathroom. Um, <laughs> let's, let's look at auto runs on, on maybe your computer, Isaiah, to say what are, because th there's a lot of things that start up on your computer, right? Some, I, I remember from easily 20 years ago, there were four spots in the registry. I would go check to see what's getting launched. Nowadays, it's crazy what's the different places you have to look for. Yes, it's it's annoying. So this is part of the Sys internal suite. So if you have downloaded that before, you will have it somewhere. And um, when you run it for the first time, uh, it will just give you the license agreement, it will load. And now you will see that at the bottom is just kind of like loading stuff. Now notice, Joe, this computer is not like a fast computer, but notice how fast it's doing this in comparison to the one that right. we were looking at, right? You right. saw that, right? And we yeah. left it there and it, it, it was crazy slow, right? Yeah. Not only it was low, it was crazy slow. The amount of time that it was taking just to do this, it was crazy. And we were trying to find out whether we could... Um, Optimize it in some way. Uh, yeah, optimize it. And one of the things that we were trying to do is stopping stuff from auto starting. Now at the bottom, I can see that it says ready. That means that it finished up with what it was doing. And basically you have one tab called everything in which it grabs all these tabs that are up here and merges them into one big view. That's okay. This is for a quick overview of what um, you can see. And if you want more information or if you're looking for something very specific, you would use the other tabs um, specifically. So for example, oh, there's a lot of office stuff starting up. Well, then just don't look at the everything tab. Just go to the Office tab because you're looking for something in Office, right? Oh, no, I just want to know when the computer starts. Well, when the computer starts, the logon procedure here is the one that you're looking for. Another one was the Win logon. Those are two different places, logon and Win logon, and so on and so forth. So, But if you want to look at everything at once, you would go to the Everything tab and then just scroll down. And just by that, you will see that... <laughs> There are a lot of things going on that start up with your computer, right? It's a bunch of things that just start off with your computer. Um, those dark gray bars are kind of like different sections, which each section corresponds to a tab. So you oh. either look at the tabs or you look at the sections, right? Um, but the main idea that I just want to kind of like ingrain in here is yeah, you can delete a, an entry. Don't do that. Don't delete an entry unless you have tested it first. Why? Because you might remove something that, and, and the way to remove something is just unchecking it. You might remove it, and then when you start your computer, something is not working. You want to go back to what it was working, right? So what I would definitely do is just go through the list, Look at the different stuff. Let's go to the logon and then disable the ones that you don't care about by just unchecking them and then restart your computer and take a look at it and see if it works fine. All right. And after a while, after a week or two, then you say, okay, let me completely delete it if you want. But if something goes wrong, you can just go back and recheck something, right? Very important. Now, 
there's a few things. I don't know if you've noticed that whenever you right click onto a file, let's say that you right click onto a file and you look at, no, not that. I wanted the shift right click. This list can get really cluttered. So auto runs allows you to look at those and say, you know what? I don't want those anymore. I think that happens in the Explorer tab. And in here in the Explorer, you will see these context menu handlers. You see those? And you will see that a few programs add context menu handlers to it. And again, if you don't want them, just uncheck them and you say, you know what? Here, look, the image resizer. I don't want that one. Or the power rename, so on and so forth. You just uncheck them or check them however you prefer. You will find a few things that I wouldn't mess with, all right? So for example, drivers. I wouldn't mess too much in this section if you don't know about those. Because if you uncheck something that is a driver that is needed for your computer, what is going to happen is that your computer is not going to start up anymore. Or it's going to have like uh, a loop problem or it just it's going to be a nightmare. I wouldn't actually mess with these guys that often. And even if you see things like this that says file not found, don't mess with those because it might actually be in a different spot and it's dynamically being loaded. So the tool auto runs didn't find it, but they do load it somehow. So don't mess with those that often. And for example, codex or execute this guy, what is called image hijacks, is something that has a crazy name, but it's not as bad, it's not as, bad as you think. For example, you see the task manager when you right click and you open the task manager and the task manager opens? Well, we can hijack that. I can go to um, Process Explorer. And in Process Explorer, I can say, um, you know what? I want to replace the task manager. And what this does is that now when I right click on this and do the task manager, instead of opening the Windows task manager, it opens Process Explorer, right? Well, that's basically what you can see right here. Um, if I reload or refresh this, what is going to happen is that now the task manager image has been hijacked for a different tool. In this case, it tells me what that tool is, where it's located, and so on. So you will always see this iExplorer being hijacked for this guy. That is normal. It has always been like that. But the word hijack is not that it's being taken off of by, a, by a, a bad program. It just means that whenever you try to launch this program, it launches a different tool that probably does the same thing. So don't be scared about those. So this little tool, really great. The only the, the one more thing that I would definitely just mention is the coloring. This pink color refers to a program that has been launched as your user. And as you can see here, there's a bunch of little scripts, prompt assistant, clip share, so on, that are launched by my user. There are other things that are not being launched by my user, so be careful with those. That's the main thing. If it is pink, you probably can remove it and no problems are gonna happen. Everything else that is not in this color, you really have to know what they are before um, unchecking them uh, because your computer might stop behaving normally just because you stopped something from launching. Does that make sense? So awesome uh, little tool. This is a great tool. Is usually helped, uh, is usually used for helping in either figuring out about malware optimizing your PC and uh, cleaning up stuff. So if you know the basics of it and you need to do something real quick, great little tool to have around. Yeah, yeah good job. That was a, it, it's a, it's a great simple way to try to, you know, optimize, get your computer to get a little more performance out of it. Yeah. So Russell is saying Windows 10 and 11 Task Manager has a safer list of startup items. But again, if you compare Russell the task managers list 
to the one that I'm showing you, like there's a, a lot of things that the task manager doesn't show that might be loading your computer and then you cannot do anything about it, right? But it's, it's true. true. It is safer. Yeah. Right. It is safer because it's not going to show you some things from the system. It's just like because of that, it's then incomplete. <laughs> um, right. So that's why I cautioned at the beginning. It's like, you know, use this at your own risk. Ray was asking the logon tab is everything that loads on logon. Yes, that's correct. It is what when they use. So there are things that load even before you put your password to log in your computer. I don't know if you guys use this, but many people just have it that it logs on straight into your desktop without a without a without a password. But let's say that you have it like me, I have a PIN or a password. Before reaching to that screen, there's a few things that are already loaded. But there are things that only load after you put the login password. Once you do that, then those things load. Mm -hmm. So log on means those things after that login password. If you don't have that password, it's just when your user actually loads, basically. Would, would we see our fake drives in that list? That's a good crazy. That's a crazy question. Let me see. Hold on. I would assume so because you can see stuff from the registry here. Right. So yeah. I'm not sure. That's a great question. Um, we could see what drives. What are this? You can search, right? Why don't you look for um, the the S, S drive? Yeah. Right. Um, That's just sad. not exactly. You see. So this. So. Remember that that thing that we put on the registry is loaded yeah. even it's before really Windows is finished loading. So that's why basically, it's even before this. I don't think we can see it here. Yeah. Yeah, I would have been surprised. It would have been very yeah. surprised this list. Let me see. Nope. I would have thought that it was, it was going to be here in boot execute at least, but not there. Services. You see this this annoying kind of things like gain input service. I don't know what gain input input service is, and interestingly, it doesn't look like a like a oh well it's here. The publisher is from Microsoft Corporation, and it is verified. So I know that the the file has a signature from Microsoft. So I would rest at ease that that's not a weird file. The ones that I do want to look out for are things that are not verified. It says Microsoft Corporation, but it doesn't have a valid license or a valid signature. So then you can run this through virus total with the tool and look at it and say, hey, let's check virus total. Um, I have to agree some some terms and it would go ahead and look for it. And it is zero out of 77. So it looks like a Microsoft thing. It looks like a Microsoft Defender thing, whatever it is. So I could just ignore that if I didn't want to and so on. So, but really cool tool to, to figure out what is slowing down your computer, right? Definitely something you want in your, your toolbox of having it handy.